We've all grown up wondering if we're alone in the universe, or if one day we might come face to face with an alien. This is the story of our search for extraterrestrials. Does ET really exist? We're going on a journey to find out. We'll visit alien planets in search of life. We'll dive into the oceans of distant moons. Here on Earth, we'll scan the universe for alien life. and seek out the answer to one of the greatest questions. Is there life on other worlds? Or in all the vastness of space, could it really be that we are completely and utterly alone? We already know that we are not alone. We share our planet with at least from the ordinary to the utterly bizarre. So what about other planets? Could they have produced life too? There's one creature here on Earth that would like to know. Us. If intelligent life could evolve here on Earth, then why not elsewhere? We're the first generation alive that might actually find out. Scientists have begun to discover new worlds out there in space. Places where one day we might encounter alien life. So how long before we find the answer to the question we all really want answered? Is there anybody out there? Look at the stars. Each of them is a sun like ours. And our sun has planet Earth. To find out, we must leave our own world behind. There's Mars, cold and inhospitable. Next is Jupiter, a vast and lifeless ball of gas. Then another gas giant, Saturn. then Uranus, Neptune, and on. All the other planets of our solar system are barren worlds devoid of life. But beyond our solar system are the stars. And remember, each of these is another sun. 400,000 million of them in a vast swirling cloud. The Milky Way. Our galaxy. And when you leave our galaxy behind, you begin to realize just how vast the universe is. Because each of these is a galaxy just like ours. And these are clouds of galaxies. In all this, is it really possible that the only planet with intelligent life is this one? It's all a question of numbers. If there are enough stars out there, the chances that alien life exists could be very good indeed. It's hard to comprehend just how many stars there are. Each of those points of light is a whole galaxy, billions of stars in every pinprick of light. 
Look at a handful of sand. How many grains do you think? Thousands? Hundreds of thousands? How many grains on a whole beach? The numbers are just too big to think about. Well, think about this. For every grain of sand on our entire planet, there are a million stars out there in space. A million stars, just like our sun, for every grain of sand. And where there are stars, there may be planets. And where there are planets, there may be life. It's happened here. So where is everybody else? If there are intelligent beings up there trying to contact us, then their messages will be picked up here, probably before anywhere else on Earth. But to hear the voices of the planets, you need a big ear. And this is the biggest ear on Earth. For the last 35 years, scientists have been working on a project to settle the question of whether we're alone. Their mission, to scan every star in the sky for signs of alien life. It's called SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And they're still doing it today. CQ 20 meters, this is N6, Uncle Donald Kilowatt calling and standing by. Seth Shostak is a SETI astronomer. His job is to listen out for ET on the radio. Radio cuts right through the gas and dust that hangs between the stars. Radio is an easy communication medium for us to use, for them to use. So no matter what else the aliens might be doing, we figure they're probably using a lot of radio. It really just comes down to this. You know, there's so much cosmic real estate. There's such an incredible number of stars, yet it's hard to believe that this is the only bit of real estate in the entire cosmos that happens to be populated by beings that are capable of developing, for example, radio technology. After the first decade of searching, SETI had nothing to show. Then, in 1977, that changed. A SETI computer detected exactly what they'd been looking for, a powerful radio beam from another star. Could it have been a signal from an alien race? We may never know. By the time they were able to train more instruments on it, the signal had vanished. It remains unexplained. One sniff of success in 35 years of searching might be enough to put you off. But Seth Shostak is undaunted. If we do this for 100 years and we don't find a signal, I, I, I would be non-plus. I'm also going to be dead. But I mean, I, that would truly surprise me. So I think that this. In some ways, this experiment is almost guaranteed to succeed. But despite Seth's optimism, finding extraterrestrials could take some time. There are just too many stars for us to search. The problem is, our galaxy is truly immense. This is us just here. That star is the sun. And this is the area we've searched so far for alien signals. Not bad, until you see just how many stars there are to search. With so many stars out there, finding extraterrestrial beings might seem like a daunting task, but the search may not be in vain. We've started to find the places where they could live. Hawaii.
Far above the clouds of Big Island sits the largest telescope in the world. Scientists come here to search for something that until recently they believed was impossible. Evidence of planets circling around distant stars. What object would you like to go to next, guys? Uh, we'll continue stepping down 9331. All right, lining up on slit. We are ready for exposure. And shooting. At first glance, their task seems hopeless. Finding a planet around another star is the equivalent of detecting a single grain of sand on the moon. But there's a trick to it. Don't even look for the planet. Just look at the star. Jeff Marcy is one of a new breed of scientist, a planet hunter. If there's a planet going around a star, we look up with our telescopes, you'll never see the planet lost in the glare of the host star. What we do is we watch the star itself, and we look to see if the star wobbles in space. It's very much like a hammer thrower. As the hammer thrower wields this huge mass around his head, the hammer thrower wobbles around being pulled by the hammer. And so even if you couldn't see the hammer itself, you'd be able to tell that that hammer thrower had a large mass at the end of some large rope. So you can tell a lot about the planets going around a star by just watching the star itself. The idea that you can detect a planet by the minuscule wobble it creates in a star is frankly astonishing. Small wonder that success was a long time coming. We started our planet search way back in 1986. And we went for nine years without finding anything. And then in 1995, we started finding some. And now we're finding planets so fast, we can barely keep up with them. Every month, we find another two or three planets. It's like we feel like we have to stuff the planets in our mouths to just, you know, pretend that we're keeping up, when in fact we're not. There's almost no question that there are literally hundreds of billions of planets just in our own Milky Way galaxy, many of which could, of course, harbor life. One by one, astronomers were finding alien worlds. But their hopes of finding alien beings soon faded. Every world they've discovered appears utterly lifeless. These are gas giants, planets with no solid surface at all for life to live on. And most of them are so close to their stars that the heat would be lethal. To find worlds where aliens could live, they'll need a whole new approach. The telescopes won't be looking for the subtle wobble of a star. They'll look straight at the planet itself. They'll analyze its atmosphere, perhaps even tell us if there's life. One day, we'll be able to look out into space and see other worlds like ours. I think for almost any human being, the picture of another Earth orbiting another star would be like looking in the mirror, but not the mirror that you see in the morning. This would be a mirror showing our whole solar system in effect and our beloved planet Earth Seeing it mirrored in another star, I think would be one of the most heartwarming and exciting days of anybody's life. It is an astonishing prospect. 
But if we're looking for alien life, finding another planet so much like our own may not actually be necessary. Our planet has everything life needs, air, water, even sunlight if you're lucky. Conditions here are just right for us. But who's to say alien life would thrive on the same things? What if it doesn't need sunlight or air to exist? Three kilometers down in the ocean lies one of the harshest environments we know. This is a volcanic vent. The temperature here is over 100 degrees. There's total darkness, pressures that would crush a human to a pulp. These creatures should literally be cooked. But here they are. If living things can thrive here, then where else? Scientists' quest for new life forms have led them to some of the most hostile environments imaginable. This cave is the relic of a vast volcanic eruption that occurred millions of years ago. It's a lava tube a gully left behind by a river of molten rock, sterilized by the heat. When the rock solidified, the tube was sealed off from the world. There's nothing here to live on, no sunlight, nothing but rock. This truly is another world. Penny Boston is a specialist in finding life where it shouldn't exist. The most important thing about looking for life on other planets is to keep your imagination as broad as you possibly can and try not to go in with preconceived notions because you never know what you might find. We can only base it on our best guesses depending on what we find here on Earth. If Penny's team finds life here, it is surviving conditions we used to claim were impossible. And if life can survive impossible conditions on Earth, why not on other worlds? And this is the first place to look, Mars. Like the caves on Earth, there's little here for life, not much water or air, Nothing but rock to live on. But perhaps the rocks of Mars will hide similar wonders to those of Earth. The miracle of life. That is cool. Look how much it narrows down there. Could that be a nematode? Penny's discoveries in these caves make the odds of finding life on Mars far higher. And life on Mars could mean life on other planets as well. If we find life on Mars, I think that our chances of finding life beyond Mars in other places in the universe um, go up enormously. Two planets in just one solar system actually have life on them. That means that life is going to be a pretty common phenomenon in the universe. So we're to search after Mars. This is probably the strongest candidate for alien life in our solar system, one of Jupiter's 16 moons, Europa. 
It appears tiny next to Jupiter, but Europa is almost as big as our Earth. This is an ice world, its surface frozen to a crippling 150 below zero. Life here looks impossible. But there is a plan to drop... What will we find there? Scientists are almost certain the probe will find deep sea vents similar to the ones on Earth. Could the vents on Europa have life? If so, it seems certain we'll find life across the universe. I think there's frankly no doubt that there must be life elsewhere in our Milky Way galaxy, at least primitive life. The biochemists tell us if you have a planet with liquid water, you would get replicating molecules, the most successful of which would compete with the other replicating molecules, and there, voila, you have life, ever more complex. The question for which we don't have an answer is whether or not our Milky Way galaxy harbors any intelligent life. And that is the $64 million question. So are we alone? The only intelligent creatures in a universe teeming with simpler life forms. It's hard to believe. With so much life, some of those creatures should surely have evolved into intelligent beings. Perhaps beings a little like us. That just begs more questions. Where are they? And why haven't they contacted us? After all, we've been making a lot of noise for more than 50 years. <laughs> Here's the puzzle. Our radio broadcasts don't just reach our homes, they also beam out into space. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Planet Earth's history is being broadcast to the universe. Even radio takes years to reach the stars. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will. Baby, I've got speed. Hi, Jimmy Hi, Richard Billhouse. Our radio broadcasts have been powerful enough to travel out into space for five decades. Hi, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. But in all that time, They've only reached a handful of the closest stars. To most of space, our planet appears completely silent. I, Dwight D. Eisenhower, There's this bubble of TV, if you will, that's moving out into space, and those earliest shows have reached out 40 or 50 light years. I mean, there are only a few hundred stars that are that close. The facts are that the aliens simply don't know we're here yet, and that's why we haven't heard from them, I think. Someday, as that radio bubble expands, someone out there might learn that we're here. But when? And what happens next? It's the sheer size of the galaxy, that's the problem. If extraterrestrials exist, they could live over there, on the other side from Earth. It would take our radio and TV broadcasts 100,000 years to reach them. 
and we've only been sending out signals for around 50. It just depends where ET lives. The signals from our planet have only reached a handful of the stars in our galaxy, but that may be enough. This star is just receiving our first radio broadcast. So if ET lives on a planet around here, they might have just found out that we exist. If they choose to answer, their message would take another 50 years or so to come back to us. So we might be waiting quite a while before we discover that we are not alone. Unless, of course, they have one of these. Intelligent beings from another world. What would they be like? Almost certainly like nothing we've ever imagined. For now, we can only speculate. But our search continues. And that means that one day, we may actually find out.